Have you ever heard a non-Christian accuse Christians of not following the Bible because they don't follow laws from the Old Testament? Or maybe you've encountered believers who do think Christians are supposed to follow the laws in the Old Testament? Well, if you've been a Christian for a while, there's a good chance you've heard your pastor tell you why Christians don't have to follow the Old Testament. The answers I've most commonly heard are that 1. We are free from all of the laws except the Ten Commandments. 2. We are free from all of the laws except for the ones repeated in the New Testament. 3. Jesus fulfilled the ceremonial laws, but we're still under the moral laws. 4. We are still supposed to follow all the Old Testament laws. Unfortunately, each of these answers that these people give are just flat wrong. Before I tell you the correct answer for why Christians don't have to follow the laws in the Old Testament, let's take a look at a couple of these laws just so it's clear what kind of commandments we're dealing with. Leviticus 19.19 says, Don't wear clothes made of both linen and wool. Leviticus 19.23 says, When you plant fruit trees, you're not allowed to eat their fruit for the first three years. Leviticus 29 says, Anyone who curses their parents should be put to death. And Leviticus 21.1-5 says, If a man is mourning someone's death, he is not allowed to shave the corners of his beard or his head as part of his mourning unless he is a close relative of the person who died. This is just a sample of the kinds of laws found in the Torah, which are the books Genesis through Deuteronomy. Since there are 613 commandments in the Torah, I think it's best we don't go through all of them. I think once Christians realize the kinds of things commanded in the Old Testament, they don't really think that Christians are bound to follow all of those commandments. And indeed, Paul says that Christians are not under the law, which is a reference to the Torah. Paul says that this is because we have fulfilled the law through faith. So then, what does this mean practically? Surely it doesn't mean that we can go around murdering and stealing, right? Well, actually, people accused Paul of claiming that very thing, but he responded by saying, What shall we say then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? May it never be. So then, how do Christians know what parts of the law they still have to obey? Some Christians have argued that we're not under the ceremonial law, but just under the moral law from the Old Testament. The problem with this argument is that there actually was no division between moral, ceremonial, or civic law in the minds of ancient Jews. They saw it all as the law coming from God, and they didn't break it up into those different categories. Likewise, Paul never says we are freed from, quote, ceremonial laws. So while this answer is interesting, it just doesn't fit with the biblical evidence. Other Christians have argued that we are free from every part of the law except what is repeated in the New Testament. Therefore, the reason we don't murder, steal, lie, etc. is because it's repeated in the New Testament. The problem with this view is that it would mean that the law hasn't fully been fulfilled. When Paul says that believers fulfill the law through faith, he doesn't say, you've fulfilled 95% of the law, except for whatever parts of the law end up being repeated in the New Testament, it's theologically important for Paul that through Jesus we have completely fulfilled all of the law. Some believers have argued that Christians are free from the law, but still under the Ten Commandments. However, this is not actually true. Paul himself says that in the New Covenant we are not under the Ten Commandments. In 2 Corinthians 3, Paul is talking about different kinds of letters as he makes a metaphor about the Corinthians being letters written on his heart. He says to the Corinthians, You are our letter, written on our hearts, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. When Paul talks about letters here written on tablets of stone, that is a reference to the Ten Commandments, which were written on tablets of stone. Notice what Paul then goes on to say about these letters of the Ten Commandments. God also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Paul here talks about the letters of the Ten Commandments leading to death, and this matches what Paul says about the law in Romans 7.5, saying that it leads to death. Therefore, the Ten Commandments is clearly part of the law that Paul talks about being fulfilled in Christ. So then, what is the correct answer? 
The reason Christians have had a hard time explaining our relationship to the law is that they fail to understand what the Old Testament law is. It's a body of laws given to Moses as part of their theocratic form of government. It's a very national law, applying to the nation of ancient Israel. Of course, some of the laws were common moral laws, just like in America you aren't allowed to murder people. However, other laws weren't directly attached to morality, like what kind of clothes you could wear, like not being allowed to go 85 miles per hour on the interstate. However, if you are under the governance of the country making the laws, then it would be immoral to break the laws. So in ancient Israel, it would be immoral to wear certain kinds of clothes, and in America, it would be immoral to break the speed limit. All this to say, once you understand what the Mosaic Law is, it's easy to understand what our relationship to it is. My relationship to the Old Testament law is the same as my relationship to South Korea's laws. I'm not a citizen of South Korea, so I don't have to follow their gun laws, prohibiting people from owning guns. However, it's still wrong for me to murder people, which does happen to line up with South Korea's laws on murder. Of course, this doesn't mean I am under South Korea's laws, it just means that some of their laws line up with morality. In the same way, some Old Testament laws line up with morality, and we are still under morality. But this doesn't mean we are still under the laws of the Old Testament. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe to help the channel grow.